Check this out. Check this welcome, out. welcome. The BLBA Big Show. Hockey sports. Life for the adult athletes. Woo! Yeah. Powered by the Beer League Players Association. You better follow me. Follow us at BLBA Big Show on every social media outlet. Follow the crew on Twitter at Nicker Jones and Trish at Trish Dangle. Let's get it. Here we go. Get it. Here we go. All right, listen here, fucksticks. Before we get going here, I've just got something to share. I want to give stuff away. I want you to get free things. So here's what we're going to do. Somewhere in this episode, we're going to say, hey, you know what? If you tweet us this word, then you're entered to win. So you have to listen to figure it out. You can tweet us at the BLPA. When you hear the word, we'll keep it running for a week. Next week on the show, we'll give away something free. Maybe it's a free Dex jersey. Maybe it's a free BLPA hoodie. Who knows? That's the fun part of the game. And another thing, leave us a goddamn review. Just stop what you're doing right now. Just go over to, what are we on, Spotify and Apple iTunes or podcast or whatever it's called, and leave us a review. Say, hey, these guys are fucking awesome. Five stars. You should listen. If you like sports, if you're a beer leaguer, listen to the show. That's all the review has to say. I don't care if you're lying. Lie about it. Say what I just said in the reviews, and we will be eternally grateful for you. People are always asking how they can help the BLPA further its mission, and it's easy. Download this episode. Share it. Tell other people to download and share it. And eventually we'll be where we need to be. So, without further ado, welcome to the greatest sports show in the world. I can guarantee Craig, the shitty ass recording software cut off half of that. No, that one didn't cut out. That was like the first time it did. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Good week, everybody. Trish, what's going on? Not a whole lot. Just getting through the day. Excited to be here. Me too. I'm in Oklahoma. I leave for Seattle tomorrow for the sold out six team inaugural Seattle draft experience tournament. So I'm super stoked about that. I love Seattle. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's basically what's on my agenda this week. But then looking out further, I think it's something like 10 out of the next 14 weeks traveling on the road to tournaments so lots of times to come uh play in our events hang out with uh, the blpa folk and do all that stuff but before we get too far trish tell them where they can find us we already heard a little bit but you can find us anywhere you get your podcast so you can get us on apple spotify or Castbox, whatever else you use or the Castbox. Uh, the <laughs> The and Khalif no. don't like it. Rock the Casper. <laughs> and you can give Nick singing five stars on any of those. Rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And then, of course, you can find us, you know, on social media everywhere. The BLPA on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Trish Dangle on Twitter. Nick at Nicker Jones on Twitter. The Nicker Jones on Instagram. And um, our wonderful Dan, who's not here tonight. You can find him at The Danny Vibes on Twitter if you want some football jokes that go over my head. Maybe you'll get them and love them. Who do, who knows? Uh, you know, one one uh, listener, guy that listens to our podcast all the time. I would I would say a hardcore listener, uh, really. Uh, Big Dad, Kyle Thornton. He's going to love this episode without Dan because he <laughs> always wants to say Dan is trash, and so now he doesn't have to hear Dan. So shout out to you, Big Dad. Um, th- this is your dream episode, and you know, I tried to get him to come on, but of course. He's a big talk, right? He's not He's not coming on no show. Of course not. You know? So, but uh, yeah, anything uh, anything great going on in your life, hockey or, or bad? Maybe we can talk you through the bad stuff too, Trish, but what's what's going on with you? No, nothing. Um, hockey related where, you know, our season ended with uh, Moose Knuckles Championship, no big deal. Um, and we're moving on to summer session, so trying to make some decisions there. Um I'm actually super pumped because some guys that have had a little bit of a hiatus from one of our teams is coming back and I'm super pumped to see them and play with them for summer session. Um, And then of course, summer is season of tournaments. So a ton of stuff coming up this month, which I'm super excited about keeping me busy. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm super. So, I mean, I don't really have a league team anymore, mainly because I'm not in Calgary. Uh, very much. I, I wish I did uh, because I, I miss the boys uh, from the Rhinos, the, the old team. But, uh, you know, duty calls. I got to be out here on the road, you know, doing things up and creating cool hockey shit. 
Um, so usually we do BLPA updates here. So let, let's just get into those. Obviously, I told you uh, about Seattle coming up. The next weekend is Denver. We're getting we're getting close to being sold out in Denver. And then two weeks later, BLPA Fest. We didn't find any lacrosse or soccer teams, Trish. Wah, wah, wah. Ooh, that's a bummer. But we still got bands and hockey. So we got the ingredients. And I'm I'm under the impression, this is kind of what I live by, is you you can never build something bigger if you never start it in the first place. So mm-hmm. we'll start with hockey. We'll start with music. We'll have a blast. And eventually we'll get to where we need to be with it and hopefully achieve the vision that's in my head. Although I, I take it, I don't know if I take it personal. I just, I hate not doing what I say I'm going to do. It, it just really bugs. It really sticks in my crawl. but I did everything I could do. Like I was trying to find soccer teams and lacrosse teams. So, you know, I'm super bummed that uh, the whole vision didn't come to pass, mm-hmm. but so that just means we need to expand the BLPA word and make sure that people know about us and, and get out to these events. Yeah. I've, I'm working on the, the golf one right now in November in Scottsdale, Arizona. So super stoked about that. I'm trying to get that as as kind of as easy integration as I can. Because obviously I know we're not going to have great golfers just, you know, rolling through the BLPA. So trying to make it like low pressure. Doesn't really matter how good you are. And to be frank with you, I'm doing it because I, I want to hang out with my dad. I don't get a chance to play hockey with my dad because he doesn't play hockey, but he does play golf. So I think it'd be cool. Like I always think it's really cool when I see like people getting to play hockey with their parents or brothers or whatever. And so my brother and dad play golf. So I'm like, well, I'm going to create a golf event uh, because beer leaguers golf, but then also I'll get a chance to to compete with my brother and dad, hopefully, or against them, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you put up a little thing on the Facebook. Um, what it, What would be your preference for a golf tournament? Would you prefer it to be like draft style or team? You know, it's it's hard because I, I, I love the draft style in the, in the hockey because it, it lets you meet so many more people and play with people you wouldn't normally play with. But I also know that golf kind of lends itself. It's a little tougher to kind of split up golf based on skill. So I think we're going to have to do a hybrid. And I'm sure, you know, there's other companies out there listening to this podcast for, you know, ideas. Um, so they're probably going to take this, but I think we're going to do like a hybrid, like you can bring your team. And then if you're just free agent, we'll, we'll make the teams for you. That That's probably the easiest way. To, Cause like, if, like they're going to ask me my hand. I don't know my handy. Like my handicap is horrible. I, I don't know how to equate that into numbers. Like I just like being out there, you know, swinging really hard and seeing how far I can hit it. And, you know, drinking some cold beverages. So, you know, I, I, I don't know what, where that handicap falls. Like, I, I, I only play with my dad, basically. So when I come to Oklahoma, I play. And I think I shot a 99 yesterday. And it's like my first time to play in, in four months. So mm-hmm. is that good? I don't know. I, I think anything. Means nothing break, to me. Yeah. Breaking 100 is, is good, I, I guess. Um, but if you shoot like 120, well, I mean, you paid to play golf. You might as well get as many strokes in as, as you can, right? So. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. I yeah. have never played golf, so I have no bearing for how oh, horrible you just, I would be. But. You just try to put that that puck or a puck. You try to put that golf ball in the hole. I mean, that's basically basically what you try to do. Any any yeah, way you I can. I mean, I've seen Happy Gilmore, so I'm pretty sure I'm. Yeah, well, I mean, you're I halfway play. there. You're halfway yeah. there. It's like you've went to one public skate, so now you can play hockey. It's that's just how it works. Same thing. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> so we got that, uh, but then obviously all of our all of our hockey tournaments. I mean. This, this obviously Seattle, Denver, and then then Austin for the BLPA Fest, and then in August we do three in a row, which is actually three of seven in a row because we do every every uh, week in September. So we're Oklahoma City, Chicago for the charity tournament for Austin's Army. Then we're in to um, do Eagle River, Wisconsin, Washington D.C., Nashville, Cincinnati, Charleston, seven in a row. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah. if you're not going to Eagle River, you're going to miss out. You're I'll idiot. be there. It's going to be a good time. Tr- hey, Trish, in the summer. Trish scratches back. That's all I'm saying. I, I will you know? scratch your back for a fee. Um, it's be so, great. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, uh, we should mention these guys that help make this show the best that it can be. Uh, this show is definitely brought to you by the Hockey Wolf. Ow, ow, ow. ow, ow, ow. So, Hockey Wolf killer group out of the pacific northwest montana and washington beer leaguers just like us that wanted to make the game 
uh, way more affordable. Uh, basically, because if you don't have to pay as much for hockey equipment, you can spend more in beer. And that's what these guys are about, making us have more beer money in our pocket. So they have uh, team wear. They've got your regular equipment, hockey sticks, all that good stuff. And they've got some specially branded BLPA stuff. So go check them out. Hockeywolf.com. Ow, ow, ow. So, and aren't anyway, they? Don't they have um, a shop by the Seattle event? They have. They have a pro shop in the arena in which we are playing our Seattle draft experience. So come by. They'll, hopefully, they'll have some BLPA merch you can buy inside of their shop. And uh, deals all weekend. I'm going to tell. I, I don't know what the deals are, but Trav, if you're <laughs> listening, deals all weekend, bud. Make it rain. <laughs> yeah. If you if you're there in Seattle and you don't go check them out, yeah, you can get fucked. Basically, but <laughs> baby, born out of your mom's butt, piece of shit. Exactly. Um, and who, we also need to thank our Patreon friends. We do. We have a, we have a lot of Patreon friends, a lot of subscribers. We, you know what? I feel like I've let these guys down because there's benefits for being a Patreon member, and we haven't lived up to our end of the agreement, Trish. Uh-oh. So, um, first off, I mean, we got to we got to thank the hockey gods. They're rad, Minchie and Mister Nall. They support at the highest level. We love you guys. If you want to support us, patreon.com slash the BLPA. But there's a lot of people that have donated at a certain level and they're supposed to get mouth hugs. And Trish, you're supposed to give them mouth hugs. I don't think you've given them mouth hugs uh, as you're required to. And basically, it's it's exactly what it sounds like. It's Mm -hmm. um, we make them feel warm and fuzzy inside using our mouths. And so, um, so basically Trish will have some of those mouth hugs ready to go next week, hopefully. And we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get back on the path. Cause I know you guys support us and we are eternally grateful for it. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of at a, a weird point in the BLPA and the tournament and all that. We're at a, a weird point, Trish. We're at a point where I can't do everything myself anymore. Wow. Um, we're at a the point day where has come. I don't like to admit it. I like to think I can do, but, but we're going like, we have so many events. Right. And so because the border has opened up a little bit, I can now travel back and forth, which is going to be way better, you know, for my seeing my kid, my wife, so I can leave Thursday, come back Monday. But I mean, that's just way more limited time on other things I can do, such as running a business, getting merch going, just, just a bunch of different stuff. And so, um, yeah, we're getting to that point where we're going to have to have, have, have some people working for us. So that's exciting, I guess. That is you know? exciting. Um, it's needed. A, a little bit unnerving, not only because I feel like I'm going to come off as a dick in this, because it's, like, it's kind of like baseball for me, right? I always wonder, like, why can't someone just pick up that fucking bat and hit it? Hit the ball. That's, it's easy, right? But then knowing that, there's people that think that about hockey and I can't skate real well. Like there's going to be things that are it's like, why don't you just do like, it's easy. You just go and do it right. Work wise. Um, but the, there's going to be a little more hand holding and, you know, direction for this person. So I worry about that because I do so many things during the day, you know, that uh, my communication skills aren't 100% on point. Cause I'm just doing instead of communicating. Right. But that's, it'll get there. Eventually, eventually, We've, maybe we hire someone that is a communicator. Right, you need the you know? yin to your yang. Yeah, well, we talked about it. How I'm just the idea guy, and all the other like the 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 stuff that actually, you know, makes it work it, are things that it's kind of like, well, it'll it'll happen. It'll just happen, and it, it doesn't just happen. We eventually have to do it, but have someone that's on that front end, making sure it happens way earlier than it usually does probably going to be a pretty big benefit for the blpa i think yeah no it sounds like it would be helpful and it would just be a way to help your ideas come to life versus somebody else kind of taking the reins 100 i'll still be in control 100 mm-hmm. percent creative control right here trish virgil virgil will be in creative control well, i mean he runs everything <laughs> so um but yeah uh, listen i you're gonna have to come to cincinnati Ooh. trish because we've got a theme that is absolutely fire. If you see this theme and you don't say, I got to go to that tournament, you're, you're just not cool. What, baby? <laughs> well, yeah, you're just not cool. You just have zero taste. 
Mm. You you know, so I mean, I I just got the I got the logo artwork today. So now we're designing the jersey. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be badass. Have you announced the theme for that yet? No, 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 Ooh, no, no. Okay. So it's it's going it's going to be something else. Um. So yeah. So that's basically what's going on in the BLPA. Lots of events. Uh, we got the charity event for Austin's Army. The the kid that has. I believe it's called osteosarcoma. I think that's the cancer that that the young Austin has, and we're trying to help raise money to help him beat the hell out of it. And so that's what we're doing for the Chicago tournament. All the proceeds for the Chicago tournament go straight to Austin and his family to help with medical bills, help him get the care that he needs to get better so he can get back on the ice and eventually become a beer leaguer. The Chicago land folks are great for charity tournaments yeah, and yeah. raising money for awesome causes. So I have no doubt that that'll fill up and it'll be a great time. And, and badass BLPA jerseys. Yep. Of course. The ones yeah. that you've already posted are fire. They are fire. Like for they sure. look great. Have you ever and been to there's Seattle? There's one first? thing that Chicago oh, loves. It's Chicago themed things. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and um, hot dogs and chocolate and cake shakes. Chocolate cake yeah. shakes. Don't forget them. They're, right now they have um stra- this is so off topic but strawberry lemon cake shakes no 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 so no, no, no delicious portillos if you're going to portillos you'll get a chocolate cake shake you're a dummy that's long and short it's of it seasonal Fine. limited item and you should well. get it anyway um I have have I been to Seattle I feel like I have been to Seattle actually I haven't seen all the sites in Seattle but a quick trip through Seattle yeah I have had great seafood in Seattle great seafood. Are you a seafood person? Seafood. I or, am a seafood person, but I have, did not get the chance to eat seafood. Yeah, I'm super stoked about seafood in Seattle and uh, and definitely checking out the Oval, or, uh, I'm sorry, Olympic View Ice Ice Arena. And with the Kraken coming, I mean, it's it's a hardcore hockey town now. So super stoked about this weekend coming up. Super stoked. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Is there the anything? Jerseys is there, look great too. Is there anything that our listeners think I should do in Seattle that I might not have already done on my past trips to Seattle? Like, what are some hidden gems? What should Nick do? That's what I want to know. That's what I in, – any, any seafood places that are, like, not well-known, but they're really rad, I would like to go to those. I don't want to spend – listen, I'm not the other company. I'm not going to spend 200 bucks on a sushi meal, but I will go to – place and try out if you have a, a gym if you have a hidden gym that's what i'll do oh there you go so, so send those over to nick tweet yep. him at him tweet me fire messages him on facebook it's gonna be great. all right other than blpa stuff trish what are we going to talk about today well i have a few things that i thought would be interesting to talk about one of those things um is fourth of july because of course I am a Canadian living in the U.S. You are an American who generally resides in Canada. And I was curious how you celebrate the 4th of July, because I don't really make a big deal out of it here. Um, My family is half American. So when I was little, I used to do fireworks over at my grandparents' house and stuff, but really like celebrated Canada Day more than anything, which is July 1st. Um, And I had myself some poutine here to celebrate, but... I didn't really do anything for 4th of July because I don't really feel the great need to celebrate, but I was curious what you did for that. I blow shit up. You blow shit up? (laughs) Fireworks or? The name of America. That's what I do. (laughs) Hey, I'm not like when I was younger, like it used to be hardcore. Like we'd spend thousands of bucks on fireworks and we'd be out there just putting on a show, me and my brother. And this year, I mean, this is the first time I've been in the States for the 4th of July in a long time. So I, I forgot how many firework stands there are all over the place uh, during 4th of July. But my, my dad lives out in the country, and we were, like, surrounded by fireworks. Like, all, like people shoot them all off. So we just sat out, you know, in, in the yard and had family over, had, you know, old, old-fashioned homemade ice cream. I had burgers and dogs, you know, typical American fare, and watched the fireworks. And it, you know what? The thing I told my – like, it, it was so loud. Like, it, they were just going off everywhere. And I told my dad, you know what's crazy about, like, this is, like, it sounds like we're being attacked. Like, we're in war. Mm-hmm. And it made me think of, like, can you imagine, like, being 
just a homeowner in like the Revolutionary War or even the Civil War. And like the army like rolls through your yard with these big old cannons and just start, starts popping off at the other. Like it, that's what it sounded like to me. And I just thought, man, I can't even imagine having that happen, uh, you know, back in the old days. But here we are like just deafening our neighbors because everyone wants to shoot off these fireworks. And uh, obviously they're dangerous. I mean, you heard about the Columbus... Blue Jackets goalie uh, taking a mortar shell to the chest in an accident and mm-hmm. passed away, which is absolutely horrible. And it, it's it's crazy. Like I can remember shooting Roman candles at my friends growing up, um, but I, I can't imagine you know being a part of you know that where an accident leads to a death due to fireworks. So um, yeah, I mean that that that's just kind of I guess that was a sad turn. I'm, talking about blowing shit up but um but sucks that that guy uh lost his life and i i hope his family finds some some peace and i i I hope you know everything's going good for them but so like for your fourth of july you just did nothing yeah we like hung out around why are you even here why are you (laughs) even here well here's the thing the the party or event whatever gathering that i usually go to um or have been going to i guess for the past few years was canceled this year um like kind of last minute so I didn't really have time to make plans and I'm also like I don't know I'll do a sparkler not big fan of like blowing stuff up myself and I have a dog and all of our neighbors have dogs oh, yeah so I don't want to be that guy you know yeah I feel bad I mean I myself like blowing fireworks up I I, I enjoy it but um it does it does affect dogs like there, there's dogs you know my my parents have a couple dogs and next door neighbor has dogs and they were, they were flipping out. But I mean, uh, you know, I, as a whole, outside of the dogs, it's it's cool to see fireworks. I, I enjoy them. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not. I don't know. I guess I'm not the biggest fan of fireworks. I'm cool with them for like a few minutes, and then I get really bored. It just maybe depends. I mean, it's just like the un-American part of me. Yeah, that's true. But you know what? And that's the thing. Like Canada, I guess they shoot off fireworks on Canada Day, but it's definitely not the same. I, I don't get the same like. I don't know. Well, maybe because Canada is just not as patriotic as the United States, but there's We're not like really a ever... more humbler brand of patriotic. No, it's, no, it's Americans it's are different. like, we are American. We want to rub it in your face and explode as much shit as possible yeah, to true. let you know that we are free. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to let them know. People need to know that you're <laughs> free. All right. We fought that war. You know, we beat back the king. We said, get, you know, get your bitch ass out of here. And now we got to let people know we did that. That's us. Yeah. We're more like throw on the hip, grab a beer, but we'll do some sparklers well, still, and a they, few they things still, in the street and then be done. Canadians are still, you know, with the queen. Like they're still running. They never broke away. <laughs> and so they're not, they can't do it, right? I mean, they still still got the queen on things. And yeah, we don't have still, the queen's permission to blow as much shit up. And they still use the letter U, the queen's English. So it's. Like it's just everywhere, right? So I still do that. It's very hard to shake that habit. Well, not me. I hate it. It's extra letter when I'm writing letters. So, um, but other than that, yeah, Fourth of July was great. I mean, I hope everyone else had a happy Fourth. Mm-hmm. Hope you played some did hockey you, or blew some things up. Did you watch the um, the Nathan's hot dog eating contest? I did. That fucking guy is crazy. Joey was, Chestnut, new did record. Se- did he have seventy six? 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes that is absolutely insane but let's i want to be honest with you uh when we're out at blpa bashes and we're grilling burgers and dogs i'm pretty sure some of those guys are also eating like 70 hot dogs in 10 minutes uh and i i think my boy jeff peck can confirm because he's having to always have the meat rolling because those guys are just pounding (laughs) pounding the birds and dogs what would be the liability factor to be to do like a hot dog eating contest to see who could eat the most hot dogs out of? Out of I, I mean, that's a, that's a good guys. question. Uh, you know, what? I hate liability. That's waivers. Oh, yeah. I guess you just have to sign waiver. Hey, hey, you know that eating seventy hot dogs in ten minutes is not good for you. <laughs> so if something ha- results in you eating, you know, getting sick by eating or trying to eat seventy hot dogs in ten minutes, we can't be held liable, right? Yeah, uh, a maybe waiver will do liable. it for you. Uh, maybe and then they'll still find some loophole but yeah it would be nice to to have a a eating contest maybe we could do like a chicken wing eating contest like whenever blpa first started and we were just doing crazy stuff because uh when we reached milestones like i can't remember if it was four thousand or five thousand or three thousand but i went and ate the hottest wings at buffalo wild wings and i do not Mm -hmm. like hot uh wings 
Um, and so that was pretty, and now I'm coming up on 20. I wonder what I can be forced to do to get to 20. Um, so many things, I'm sure. Yeah. So easy to uh, sell you. Um, so wings, what would be a, like in an ideal world, if you had to enter like an eating contest, what would be the food that you would pick? Oh, that's a good question. I pro- I don't know. Like I, like I can eat a lot, but I don't eat a lot. Um, I mean, it'd have to be wings or pizza, right? Ice cream. I can eat a lot of ice cream for sure, but that, you know, that helps the blood sugar would probably limit me. I could probably, um, chocolate chip cookies. That would be pretty good. Really? You think you could put away like a ton of chocolate chip cookies? Depends on how much, how many chocolate chips are in them. (laughs) If you had, so Nathan's hot dog rules, if you had 10 minutes, to eat as much of something as you could, what you would do? Chocolate chip cookies? Well, like you just sweet. Asked, you just asked. You just asked me what I what I thought I could eat a lot of, and I think I can eat a lot of pizza, a lot of wings, and a lot of uh, chocolate chip cookies. I couldn't eat the wings fast because you got to like. How do they There's measure a lot that? to navigate? Yeah, um, but like chocolate chip cookie, I mean, I could slam them right in there. I can eat tacos pretty fast from Taco Bell. I can put a Ooh, whole soft yeah. taco in my mouth at once. So it's, <laughs> I did it right. on video. I did it on video in the BOPA. <laughs> you might uh, have to repost that. Yeah, it's, well, just scroll back. Nick eating a whole taco at one time. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I definitely couldn't eat that many tacos. I mean, just, uh, yeah, it was, I saw the rerun of it even just like yesterday. And I was still, like, I already saw it once. And now here I am watching it again because it's just amazing. Yeah, it's impressive. Uh, didn't the he also? That... Didn't he also like challenge a bear? What? One? I'm yeah, there was. That up. Yeah, no. I saw. I saw a video. I don't know if it was that guy, but they had a bear eat hot dogs against a human uh, to see who would win. I can't remember what the result was. I thought that was funny though. I feel like I would have. That's something. Oh, Kobayashi. That sounds like also a competitive, like a famous competitive eater. Like, how do you, how do you find out that you're, that you're good at that? Like, how do you find strategies, right? So I think you just like, I think if you have a passion, (laughs) then you can, you can figure it out. Cause like these, these competitive eaters, they'll like starve themselves and then eat a bunch of like iceberg lettuce because it's no calories but it stretches your stomach so that they they can prepare for these kind of competitions so i think you just have to be really passionate about shoving soggy hot dog buns in your mouth and then you're good to go Hmm. that's the one that's the thing that grosses me out the most about like it's not the gluttonous eating or anything it's the like moisture of the water soaked hot dog buns that's like spewing out of their mouths as they eat it's yeah it's really gross so yeah so it was, it was kobayashi i was looking i was looking at that uh i, I can't remember what it was um a, a grizzly bear he said a grizzly bear could eat eight hot dogs per minute but only for about six minutes oh so, so it sounds like you know we're better than grizzly bears at eating hot dogs so yeah, I mean, well, Joey Ch- Chestnut is for sure because that's forty-eight hot dogs that, in yeah. six minutes, which yeah, is still it, a lot. But it's 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 like my oh, and of course, Barstool's now jumping on the on the the hot dog eating contest. So of course, um, you know those guys they're on <laughs> everything. God, I wish I wish we had I wish we had the infrastructure just to do all the content that they do. I have so many ideas. I just don't have time to get into it. So. You need a clone. So, what I don't understand is how come, like, like they don't even like hockey over there. They only started liking hockey because they found out they can make money from it, and and everyone's excited about oh, oh, Spit and Chicklets is doing a roller tournament. It's like, come on, like, come to people that actually love beer league. Come to our tournaments where we love beer league. Like, we're not just we're just not exploiting you for the money. Like, we're doing cool events because we love hockey and we love doing them. So. Um, but I do, I do love spin chicks. So I don't need a bunch of hate mail fucking trying to <laughs> bite me because I'm dogging spin chick. The only thing I don't well, like funny is guys. They're, but they're NHL guys. Yeah, but they, they're NHL guys playing roller. They probably never played roller in their life. But the, the only reason I don't like spin chicks is because I can't understand RA. So it's like I'm listening to him when he starts <laughs> talking. I'm like, okay, what's the point of listening to this? I can't understand this fuck. That's like, I know some people that feel the same way when they're watching Letter Kenny. Like they just 
cannot comprehend. So they no, 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 no. Letterkenny is dumb because the jokes aren't good, and they've used them <laughs> over and over again. And I'm not really that opinionated, Trish. So this is kind of a surprise that I would call out Letterkenny like this. Yeah, I'm shocked. This but is breaking. Breaking. Letterkenny. Uh, actually, you know what? Here's the deal. Here's the word. If if you tweet the BLPA right now that Letterkenny is trash, you you could be entered in a giveaway. Tag the BLPA <laughs> and say divisive. say I agree with Nick. Letterkenny is trash. Ooh, there, there you go. go. That's all you have to do. Right there. Easy peasy. Just if, and if you love Letterkenny, suck it up. Just do it. Hey, can you imagine like we burn a bridge with Letterkenny and they like because they're actually the guys outside of the show are like really rad. Like yeah, you're on record saying that. Jared is like Jared is like a Flames fan, so we're like bros. We don't know each other, but we're bros because we're Flames fans. So we we have to live in that misery for you know every hockey season. So uh, we're we're related basically, and uh, so I'm not trying to burn a bridge just with Letterkenny. I understand they're pandering to a certain uh, intellect level in the world, one that's obviously far below mine. And uh, the jokes just, they, they were funny at first. And they just, after the first couple episodes, they're just not funny anymore. It's just the way it goes. Yeah, so, you're just, you're too intellectual for the show. And we've, figure we've it all out. always said that, that you're too intellectual hey. for a lot of things. <laughs> figure it out. I already did. All right, so. <laughs> but those, and like, how much is it paining you that those jerseys look sick for that tournament? Hey, hey those jerseys do look <laughs> sick. I, but hey, I guess I'm doing what Letterkenny is doing. I'm also pandering to an audience that will like those jerseys. So mm-hmm. you're go gonna figure. you're gonna get so tired of hearing the same <laughs> the same like five quotes circulating. Oh my god! All it, weekend it, long. <laughs> boys are buzzing. Where yeah? But where you from, bud? Where are you from, bud? That's all I heard in Wisconsin. Where are you from, bud? Right. Where are you from, bud? Want some fireball? Want some fireball? Yeah. Fireball. Man, yeah. That even just looking at those pictures, I feel like you can smell the cinnamon just radiating mm. off of people. Cinnamon and sweat. Yum. Exactly. <laughs> all right. What's next? All right. So speaking of jerseys, I was kind of tidying up my jerseys um this weekend because I had some tournaments and was busy so like my stuff just kind of got thrown everywhere and I was looking through all my stuff and putting some things away and you know I have some jerseys that I love some I don't really care about um but I have some like sentimental favorite ones kind of tucked away and I was curious like because you haven't been playing that long um what jerseys do you have that you kind of like cherish that are like your favorite jerseys um that's a good question i mean it's it's hard because i do all these tournaments and they we get jerseys so i've gotten so many of them but you know the hard part is like like without a jersey like yeah without a jersey you're not a team if you're playing that's how i you disagree Mm -hmm. no i just think that a jersey is what brings a team together and lets people know that you're proud of this group of folks so we have badass, and they don't have to be badass. Just as long as they're matching, it makes you feel like a team to me. Yeah, right? see, I feel like I get that. And I feel like the, I don't know, I've, I play on a team currently. We don't have a team set of jerseys and everybody kind of just shows up in a white or a black depending on the game. And I feel like it's a big, uh, a big win for us and like a big kind of fuck you to everybody else when we show up kind of like a ragtag district five and play the hell out of other teams and like yeah. play super well as a team. Cause it looks like, Oh, probably not going to be super great. They probably haven't been playing together long, whatever, but like a lot of skilled players that are like working their butts off on the ice. And I think yeah, it it's sounds kind of like fun a bunch to show of, up like that. It sounds like a bunch of ringers that won't move up after they win a championship. <laughs> no, no, no. Women's league D one. Okay. Highest um, division. Thank you very much. I just I feel like if you if you if if you've been together and you're not com- committed enough to be like, this is my squad. We're gonna buy jerseys to represent that squad. Then you're not really a squad. And you know or, you can win all you want. You know because I, like I think about my life going back. Like I can remember getting like those baseball jerseys like for select teams. And when you got the jersey, like you knew like. I'm a part of, I'm a part of the Oklahoma City Braves or like going to high school like I got that high school jersey at uh, college same thing like it's just it, it, I I just feel and for me my opinion is that jerseys are 
significant in, in the sports you play because it, it means you're a part of something. And that's, that's the visual representation of what you're a part of. And I know there's a lot of people, I understand money and all that stuff. But to me, it's like, okay, well, if you can't commit to getting a team jersey, then you're not really a team. That's how I feel. That's I, how I, feel. I mean, I think pro- especially for this team, like specifically, I we all have a lot of jerseys because a lot of the girls have been playing for a really long time. So to have like another jersey on the pile and spend like whatever, 60, 70 bucks on it doesn't sound great. And I'm the person that runs the team. So if do I want to track people down for money for these jerseys or like front all this money for a set of jerseys and maybe not get part of that back? Eh, not really. Hey, lay down the law. Let's just make your team the BOPA team. You have BOPA jerseys. The last hey, jerseys you ever need. my team? Boom. Well, I can't, obviously, like, I can't afford to just give you guys jerseys, but we can work something out here. Like, I mean, let's get you guys into a team. But to answer your question, I mean, obviously, like, my first jersey, pr- probably pretty sentimental, one that I'll hold on to, the Moondogs. Um, That's a fun name. Yeah, I had a dream about this uh, at one point. I wanted to name my softball team this, but I was in space in my dream floating around and I floated up to another astronaut and he opened his, his, his hatch and it was a, a dog. And he said, I'm a moon dog. Ow. I was like, that needs to be a, a team name. And so when I started a hockey team name, the softball teams would let me do it. So a uh, hockey team, we made the moon dogs and uh, it was a cool name. And I, I think I got it from, um, there was a, a movie called airborne. Roller Brady? Oh, you got to go see it. And he calls them moon doggies. So that's probably where it was stuck in my subconscious. But uh, it's, it's a hockey movie and a rollerblade movie. Go check it out. Airborne. Great movie, actually, if, if you're a kid. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, we'll see. so maybe, maybe that one, maybe my like the first uh, draft experience jersey from my company. Uh, that's, that's sentimental, but the rest of them, is just like, for example, I was playing last Wednesday in Oklahoma and a dude was like, Oh, that's a cool Navy Jersey, you know? And I'm like, Oh yeah, cool. Did you serve? He's like, yeah, I was in the Navy. So I just took it off and gave it to him. And so, um, yeah. So a lot of times, like I have so many now that I have a couple that are sentimental, but not my first flames Jersey with the Jerome McGinley on the back. That's, that's sentimental, but for the playing, playing wise, ah, I, I, there's so many of them, but if you're on a team, you need to represent that team by getting their jersey. That's the way you know you're a part of the team. Don't be like Trisha's team. Or you no. can show up and pay your league fees and you're also a part of the team. That's just, that's just another <laughs> step. Yes. You gotta pay your that's league fees. That's the most fees. important step. Pay your league fees. Also, fee. I just looked up this like airborne movie. It looks pretty sick. Also, Seth Green and Jack Black are in it. Yep. Jack Black's the one that said Moon Doggies. Love it. I'm into it. I'm going to try and watch this movie. Yeah, also, right. Moondog is a really cool name for a team. Yeah, it was a cool name. We were the Moondogs. Then we got sponsored uh, by a carbonation company called, and we were the A1 Carbonic Moondogs. Ooh. That was pretty cool, too. And uh, yeah, and then I think the Moondogs just kind of disbanded. And yeah, then we became the Gladiators. Oh, that's a fun one, too. Yeah. So I think about my own. I like I have still my jerseys from my travel team when I was really little, um, the Erie County Coyotes. Um and I I like they're obviously too small for me to wear now. Um, but I if I wasn't wearing shoulder pads, maybe I'd be able to pull it off. But uh those are really great. And then my team right now, the championship team, boo, gotcha. Um the moose knuckles, I just really love it because it has a sick moose design on it, and uh, the is socks it, are really nice. So. Is it is it the moose that looks like the Notre Dame fighting Irish guy throwing, like he's trying to punch somebody? No. <laughs> oh, that would be a cool. No, one. but if you're friends with me on Facebook, you saw it, and it's pretty sick. Um, and I don't think I really have like I love my strange crew jersey, my like my original strange crew jersey. Um when we just started they're just like the bright neon yellow green uh they're super obnoxious and just have like the simple screen print on the front and there's something about that that i really like too because it was very like we want a jersey to look like a team and we're probably (coughs) the weirdest group of people here let's make the jersey weird too and there it was and i love it well that'd be a good like if we made a weird boys 
team, and that was all it is, just weird boys. Weird That'd be boys. pretty cool. Where we call like Jeff Peck kind of is in charge of like the free agent team when we go to like BLPA bashes and stuff, and like he didn't want to name them, so I just named them the scumbags. Yeah, honorary yeah. scumbag over here. Yeah, so maybe I'll just change them to the weird boys, but it'll be B O Y Z. Weird boys. <laughs> That's the worst. So, do it. <laughs> but I'll, I'll do it for sure. Yeah. Um, Though that's what I'll call them in in Austin. I'll call them the Weird Boys. There you go. So, you just change it up every time. No, it'll just now. It's just always going to be. It's either going to be Weird Boys or Scumbags, depending on who's on the roster. Yeah, exactly. Well, nice. it's boys is like it's all like I always say. Let's go boys. Even though we got girls on, I don't. I and I don't mean to offend. And I hope the girls aren't out. And I always have to say, oh, boys is an all-encompassing term for the team. Uh, hopefully that's not offensive. I'm definitely not trying to offend anyone with that. Yeah, I never – I have this conversation on, like, every new team. And they're like, oh, here we go, boys or guys. Oh, and girls. And I'm like, no. No, yeah, I don't need just, that. Like, I'm just here. You don't need to single me yeah. out. Like, it's I'm just, fine. Yeah, we get just, it that it's, like, a, an all-encompassing term. It's like saying dude. Everybody's – we're all dudes. Yeah, exactly. Trish just said, hey, I'm just here to, you know, play some puck and scratch them back. So let's go. <laughs> that's what I always say. Yeah, you that's, that's what I heard. Always saying that. That's what I heard. Always scratching backs. <laughs> hey, can I just take one quick minute? If you're listening this far, glad you're still here. Go give us a review. Give us a share. We love you. And you can enter yourself in to one of our drawings just by tweeting the BLPA and say, Nick's right. Letter Kenny is trash. Even tag me at Nicker Jones for extra, you know, brownie points. Anyway, continue. <laughs> but also make sure you tag the BLPA. You yeah. Well, you have to tweet it. to the BLPA for sure. Yeah. So definitely. you can tag Letter Kenny too if you want. Well, let's not get him pissed off, Alice. <laughs> you know. Well, let's let's get him knowing what's going on though. Are you trying to start a tweet with me and Letter Kenny? If we could start a tweet, I think that would be great. I, I love a good tweet for sure. Love. I them. think they'd be a great group to tweet with. Yeah. I think there's okay. a lot of quips that might come at you. Jared, Jared, we're bros. Uh, outside of Letterkenny, we're bros. <laughs> Flames fans. But let's, hey, let's tweet it up between the BLPA and Letterkenny. Hey, anyone else that wants to smoke, bring the tweets. Let's go. Tweet it up. Tweet is too close to queef for no, my liking. Tweet, tweet is just a sh- shorter term for Twitter beef. So. Yep. Tweef. Tweef and... is. Hashtag Tweef. Yep, get to Tweef and let's go. Yeah. I think we talked about that a while ago, who you'd want some beef with. And I don't know. I, mean, I think Letterkenny is a great place to to start. And and Twitter beef is way better than any a real beef. beef than a real beef. Well, not Angus beef. We don't want real beef. I would love to eat real beef. Angus beef, <laughs> steaks, Kobe. Are you getting hungry? No, <laughs> I already have. Up? I've ate so much in the last three days that I just can't even think about food right now. Well, that's what happens in America's holidays. I yeah. that was like I said I didn't really do anything. That was the thing that I did was I ate junk food Sweet. on America's Day in honor of America. Yep. Sweet. Sweet. All right, what's next? <laughs> Another thing I wanted to talk about was uh the biggest disappointment you've had in your hockey career. So again, yours is a little shorter, but you've gotten to play a lot of hockey and i'm curious what your biggest disappointment is um you know i don't i mean i guess my biggest disappointment is i've never won like a beer league like a league championship mm-hmm. i've played in a lot of championship games but we've never won won the league i've won a lot of tournament championships but never uh never 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 got to say i'm i'm a league champion so maybe that's my biggest disappointment um yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not too disappointed in, in my hockey career. You know, I'm just, just kind of out there, glad to be out there, still being able to play. Mm-hmm. How about yourself? Um, I don't think I've had any, like, active disappointments. Like, I've had losses in the championship. Like, I think we lost in a shootout last year or overtime. Sorry, we lost in overtime last year, and that sucked. Um, I've had hard losses, and that hasn't been fun. But I think that's just that comes with the territory of playing hockey. You're going to hopefully get to a championship game or or something like an important game and you're going to get shut down at some point and you learn to roll with that. Um, I think one of the things that 
is super disappointing to me is my sister when she played high school hockey was coached by my mom and that was from what I understand not a great experience for her but was like really cool that that she had that experience and that's something that I would have loved like that wasn't an opportunity for me at all like I didn't get to to do the hockey thing with my mom as much as I would have liked to she coached me um in softball when I was really little and stuff but I never really got that experience with hockey and that's you know we play because my mom played so being able to have that experience would have been really cool but it just it didn't work out that way and I'm like so grateful that my sister was able to have that experience but I would have also loved to to have that my dad my dad coached my brother but didn't coach me in baseball yeah but he okay. like he always said like he said that I was I was too competitive and too serious so he didn't want he didn't want to stand in in that in the way of that and okay. so uh, I get it my my brother sucked my brother's a great dude but he <laughs> he wasn't nearly as good at baseball as me he's a better golfer for sure one hundred percent better golfer uh, but all the other sports I I think I reigned supreme on him that's fair my sister was always better at sports than me no, he, my he tra- mom took softball really seriously like when i was little little she was the one that was like cracking the whip and making sure everybody was focused and like playing the game well and i i still like hold that mindset when i'm on the diamond oh nice well we'll get some blpa softball tournaments going i'm ready to, to you know go yard on some folks <laughs> get dingers. Dingers, dingers, dingers only city. dingers only for sure <laughs> So how far, I don't think I know this about you. How far did you go in baseball? I just, I played through college until I okay. hurt myself. And then, yeah. Tails so, all the time. Yeah. And then I played some competitive softball, went to some world tournaments and yeah, that's, that, that's basically it. I, I can still go out and hit. I can't throw my shoulders are so, so foobarred up at this point in my life, but uh, I can still hit, I can still, I can still hit a ball. Big P rods. DH. P rods. <laughs> that's cool i didn't know that that sucks that you got injured though that's always i mean obviously you hear that a lot yeah oh, for sure. the guy at the bar that could have gone d1 but had well i probably injured. i probably yeah i probably could have got d1 <laughs> no big deal or anything yeah no big deal so <laughs> but yeah so. all right <laughs> shall we move on to would you rather fight lanny cut uh i like the would you rathers but we'll do whatever whatever needs we to be do done both okay let's why not do both? a quick fight lanny cut then we'll finish on would you rather Okay. So this one should be an easy one. Uh okay. fight liney cut. Big Dad, Peck, or Dan. Oh God. Um <laughs> That's such a that's such a hard one because um uh I I'd wanna cut and fight Big Dad at the <laughs> same time. But you know that that's that's a tough one. Um I, I think for sure I, I oh that's such a hard one. I thought it was Man, easy. You gotta try. I mean, I want to fight Big Dad for sure because I'd beat the living tar out of that kid, um, and that would feel great. But I don't know. Like, um, I, I I'd want to line a peck if he would pass me the puck more. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm not saying that he doesn't. He does pass me the puck some, but he doesn't pass the puck to me all the time. Um. Uh, but here's the deal. I'm not uh, in beer league. I'm not a defense wins championships kind of guy. So I got, I got to cut defensive Dan who doesn't ever really even play defense. So he's and an li- offensive defense. That's what yeah. you want. Yeah. He doesn't put up points though. <laughs> that, like it, you can call yourself an offensive defenseman, but if you're an offensive defenseman that doesn't score, then what are you really? Mm. Then you're just me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put up so, points and we know that <laughs> well sometimes but um but yeah so i think that's what i'd go with how about you okay um you'd for sure ooh. you'd for sure fight you'd for sure fight big dad right no here's the thing i'm cutting big dad whoa okay get out of here okay don't, here. don't even want to fight him don't want to give him that satisfaction get out of here um don't need you talking shit on me taking long shifts goodbye <laughs> um <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna fight Peck. Ooh, and here's why. <laughs> okay. okay. Because I don't think because uh, he's a big teddy bear and I don't think he would actually like take a swing at me. 
um or at least that's what i'm banking on because i don't i don't want that smoke i would go down for sure um but i'm banking on the fact that he would he would feel bad if he hit me too hard so i'm taking that fight obviously obviously you missed uh the time when peck rolled out and was telling people to fight me fight me (laughs) fight me you obviously sadly did because i was on the ice (laughs) but so you know I know the tale, and that's fine. But I don't think I don't think I'm on the other end of that getting. Are like, you just, Are you just trying to be nice to Dan here? What's going on here? No, okay, liney Dan, and here's why. Because I think he'd be really fun on the bench, which is always like my number one. But also because I haven't gotten to play defense with him yet, and I think it would be really fun. And I I like playing with someone who's gonna because I'm a very stay-at-home defenseman so I appreciate when I have a partner who's gonna like pinch a little bit more who's gonna skate the puck up a little bit more I like that because I know that I can hang back and cover them like I feel a lot more secure that way um and yeah I haven't gotten to play defense with him he's the only person I think that I haven't played with yet didn't you just hear me what I didn't you just hear me when I told you about his defense you said he was an offensive defenseman that didn't put up points. You didn't say he wasn't offensive. Well, I'm, well, I'm just telling you. Well, I mean, if you if, 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 play. You don't, if you don't put up points, then how how can you be offensive? You can sup- you can go in the zone and support. That's fine. Okay, well, I think okay. that's still different than being stay at home. So yeah, I think that's my okay. Well, that's my reasonable hey, hey, hey. answer Every, there. Everyone gets their own opinions. That's that's a good thing about this life. <laughs> except yours are the only ones that are right minor educated opinions uh, that are always right what what did we say Uh, there was an episode about my opinions being always right i think i just can't remember what we call them oh yeah i don't know and my brain's not functioning all the way so i can't can't remember but if you remember tweet at us super fans basically big dad um (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so my fight, my would you rather today is a Reddit classic. Oh, so good. I love, I love me some Reddit. <laughs> so, this is like the OG would you rather from all of the AMAs on Reddit. Would you rather fight a hundred duck sized horses or one horse sized duck? Hmm. Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of qualifying questions like, is the duck as strong as a horse? I think it is. A it's got duck strength, but it's got horse sized duck strength. Like it's not any stronger than I don't know. It's a it's as strong as a duck times whatever. Well, there's it's always power. There, there's there's always powers in numbers. So I think I would have to have to go with the horse sized duck. To be honest with you, really? Yeah. How are you because, going about that? Well, I don't, I don't know that, but I do know that I don't want to be dealing with twenty duck-sized horses, and I get them under control, and now I got to deal with another eighty of them. Like it's just, it's just too much to deal with. Like if they all form together and come at one coordinated attack, then you're done for with a hundred, with a hundred of anything. You know, mm-hmm. like e- even if if there were a hundred three-year-olds. I could probably get through 55 of them easily, but I could, but if they all coordinated with each other, they could take it, take you down. Yeah. And so you that's have to have faith that they could coordinate though. But okay. No, you have to have faith that they couldn't coordinate. I always, I don't want to underestimate my opponents. So I'm going into it thinking they can coordinate. Maybe they can't, but if they do, you're in trouble. That's true. I am on the opposite side because I would rather fight the hundred duck sized horses because I think it would just be easier to take those down quickly. I think a horse sized duck, like ducks, can be really wily. And a beak of that size can really fuck you up. Yeah, but if you can get behind it and if you can get on top of it and choke it out, you know what I'm saying? That's a. That's a strong neck to try to choke out. And like a duck, they're they can like reach pretty far. So if you're behind it, I don't think that's super helpful. Like it's could still but get I, it. But I'm thinking about like I'm not gonna break its neck. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna try to shut off its air supply. 
Yeah, I don't know how much. That would take a lot of force, I think. I don't know if you could get your arms around a I, duck neck that size. I, I can get my arms around a horse it. neck. All the way around a horse neck? Well, not That's one, but two neck. of them. But yeah, I'm just saying that, that I'm trying to measure what with are you my gonna do? Are you gonna, What are you going to kick the are you going to kick the duck sized horses? Do you Absolutely kick them? I am. And, they're, Absolutely. and then they're going to come right back. It's you're going to tire yourself out. And then I don't think I am. It. Yeah. And like I for. think I can I think of that size I can and like of horse brain can maybe I can coordinate them. I don't know. In a way, I, I, think, I think you're giving I could... yourself a lot of credit here, Trish, and I'm not. I'm not <laughs> trying to take anything away from you, but I just think no, it that it seems if... like you are. Listen, I've worked with children long enough that I can coordinate a large group of small things. Not a hundred of them. Yeah, I know. I think I could. Put I me don't... in a ring. <laughs> Put me in a ring. Let's do it. I mean, I think that I'd win a lot of money betting against you uh, because I think you're underestimating your opponent here, and that's that's. I think you're underestimating the giant duck. I'm not under I, – like, I know that I, I've got my work cut out for me. I'm packing a lunch. I got that. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, even even I have a chance to knock out Mike Tyson one-on-one. -on -one. But if I had to fight 100 Mike Tysons, no. Yeah, but, you they're, just, but they're small Mike Tysons. It doesn't matter. Like, you, 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 sure, you might get 25 of them. You might get 50. You might get 75 of them. Okay, There's so no what if way. I'm grabbing a couple of them by their tail – and swinging them around to knock the other ones over. But I, like, how realistic do you think that's gonna? You're gonna sw then you're gonna get dizzy. You're gonna fall down, and then no. you're done. Once you get on the ground and there's a hundred duck-sized horses, you're done for, Trish. I don't think so. I think I I think I have that. I think I have that fight. See, I mean, you're just underestimating your opponents, and that's the number one sign. Or I'm correctly estimating myself. I, well, I don't. I, yeah, normally, people don't do that. So I've, I've seen people rank themselves in draft experiences far too long to know that <laughs> nobody correctly, correctly uh, looks at themselves and, you know, <laughs> so. I think in small animal fights, I am a correct estimator, but until okay. I am put in a ring with a hundred duck sized horses, you won't know. Okay. Well, let's make it happen. All right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today on July 7th, 2021. See you next week. Be good or be good at it. <laughs>